Hi, welcome back to Medical Coding Club. And today I'm going to uh, explain about CCS certification, which is from Ahima. Okay, so today we'll learn the you know the syllabus of the CCS and the eligibility criteria and the fee structure of CCS exam, passing rate, and you know we'll go through all those. CCS, the Certified Coding Specialist. This credential is offered by American Health Information Management Association, that is AHIMA. So AHIMA is a huge educational body and you know it is having a, a very high standards. So it is a professional certification designed for an individual who have expertise in medical coding, particularly in assigning accurate diagnostic and procedural codes to the patient record for billing and classification purposes. The CCS credential is highly regarded within the healthcare industry and, and it is often sought after medical coders, health information professionals and health organization. So if you are working in inpatient, okay, then CCS will be your golden standard certification. So this certified coding specialist certification has huge value. And once you get the CCS and you are working in an inpatient, you can set up your, uh, yourself for success. Okay, so if you are working in the inpatient, plan the CCS and take your exam. So let's see the so let's see the CCS exam content. So wh what are the things you should study in order to prepare for the CCS exam? So this CCS exam is split into four domains, each of which has its own set of tasks. Okay, so here are the four domains, coding and knowledge and, knowledge and skills, which covers 51.9%. And then coding documentation, which covers 10.1% and then provide the queries which covers 8.9% and then regulatory and compliance which covers 29.1%. Okay, so you, what uh, in, in the sense coding knowledge and skills, what are the things you have to learn means first you should learn uh, applying the diagnosis and procedure course based on health record. Okay, this is the first thing and the next task is determine the principle or primary diagnosis procedure. So you should be able to uh, find that principal diagnosis or primary diagnosis and then applying co coding conventions to the guidelines. So you should be thorough with the uh, guidelines and then how to apply the CPT, HCPCS modifiers, this and all you should know and then sequencing of diagnosis. So the hierarchy uh, based on severity and everything, the guideline you should know. And then address coding edits. So we know there are many coding edits uh, that and all you should learn. And then assign reimbursement classification. Extract the pertinent information from health record. So you will have the you will be given with the health record by seeing or reading the health record. You should be able to uh, you know have the knowledge to extract the diagnosis. Okay, and then recognize the significant condition uh, that is maybe some condition you have to recognize whether the condition is CC or MCC that means comorbidity or major comorbidity. Okay, so that this much will cover in coding knowledge and skills which is 51.9%. Then we'll see the coding documentation. So here in coding documentation as name says uh, you have to uh, see the documentation. If something is missing or uh, you, if some documentation looks like uh, conflicting, uh, that and all the discrepancy you can address. And then provider queries. Okay, some uh, like uh, you will be given with the documentation, right? In the documentation, they are not specifying what condition it is. Okay, but they, are, they will be given with the many symptoms which related to condition. But they are not saying the condition patient this condition patient is having. So in in this case you you find it difficult. Okay. So in those scenarios you can query the provider, and then regulatory and compliance. So in regulatory and compliance, what what you have to learn means the integrity of uh, HIPAA. 
the integrity of HIPAA and the healthcare records and also uh, how to uh, apply the appropriate specific guidelines, spare, spare specific um, guidelines you should know. And then recognizing the patient safety indicators. This is very important. You, will, you have to learn the recogni recognizing patient safety indicators and also uh, HAC. That means hospital acquired conditions. So based on documentation, you should be recognized the uh, hospital acquired conditions. So these are the four domains you should work on. Coding and knowledge skills and uh, coding documentation, provider queries and regulatory and compliance. So as you can see, they've already distinguished the percentage. So based on that, you can work on that. So next is CCS exam pattern. So how this CCS exam will be? So here they will be given with multiple choices and also medical scenarios so in multiple choices uh, you will be given 97 multiple choices will be there so you can uh, choose the correct answer and then eight case study will be there eight case study so here uh, overall the question uh, you you might get 115 to 140 question so how it varies means in the case studies each case studies will have uh, sometime one case study will have two question but sometimes one, one case study will have uh, three or four sub questions like assign principal diagnosis or identify the secondary diagnosis. And in the, in the third question, uh, which kind of root operations. So likewise, in the case studies, you will be seeing the uh, three or four sub question. So overall, you might get 115 to 140 questions. And the next CCS exam duration. So this CCS exam will have four hour duration without no break. Okay. Uh, that means you, if you want break, you can take, but the timer will not stop. Okay. And in the first two hours, you can complete your multiple choice section and then uh, left out two hours, you can uh, work on case studies. And next is CCS exam mode. So it is a computer based. I mean CCS exam is also an online. But here in India, we have to go to the assigned uh, testing center and then we can take the CCS exam. So next is CCS exam fees and registration. So once you are ready for the exam, you can apply by visiting the AHIMA website and you can apply through online. So you can submit your application uh, through online and fees you can pay only through credit card and the coming to fees how much you have to pay uh, if you are a member then uh, you will be paying $299 if you are a non-member then you have to pay $399 okay and then uh, what they will do after once you submit the application they will review they will review your application and uh, some you know if you are if they find out that you are eligible person and they will send this ATT authorization to test okay then you can uh, schedule your exam based on your convenience but you have to schedule your exam within 120 days after receiving the ATT if you are not scheduled within 120 days it is going to uh, you know invalid so you have to plan and you have to take the CCS exam so next is required uh, books for CCS. Okay, so you, you already you, you will be knowing that you have to work on ICD-10 CM and also ICD-10 PCS and CPT from AMA. Okay, so here um, ICD-10 uh, PCS will be uh, for procedure and CM for ICD-10 CM for diagnosis and CPT you have to uh, and other CPT you have to work on so mainly uh, you know when you start preparing for an inpatient certification you should be able to differentiate or you should be thorough with the guidelines which is for inpatient and the guidelines which is for outpatient okay so this is the main thing and then ccs exam eligibility so as you all know ccs is not as easy as CPC okay CPC we can as a fresher we can uh, take some course and we can try to 
uh, crack the exam but coming to ccs here as it is an inpatient hospital setting if we feel little difficult we need some more time to understand and analyze the concepts okay so the hahima prefers uh, one like oh, hahima prefers these kind of candidates where one year of coding experience uh, directly applying codes and educational courses in anatomy physiology and uh, pathophysiology pharmacology medical terminology and reimbursement methodology so and uh, either either you should have the one year of experience and you should take uh, this uh, full fledged course for ccs and then you you did not take any course in the sense you at least you should have 2 years of coding hands on experience and then uh, if you have one year experience and if you have certified coding associate also this also would be fine they will prefer if they if you are not taking anything and you are a fresher you just uh, completed your degree and you are submitting uh, your uh, application means the ahima definitely going to deny the application so next is ccs exam passing score will be 300 you must achieve scale score of 300 to pass the exam and next is ccs exam day so you have scheduled your ccs exam and now you have to uh, today is your ccs exam so what are the things you should know so on the day of your exam you should arrive 30 minutes before your appointment time so suppose you your um, timing is one o'clock you should be there at the center in the 12 30 or 12 15 so after that uh, you will be asked to pre present two valid forms of identification and your uh, books okay in the approved books you can take with your uh, yourself and at the testing center and uh, you can uh, go inside the testing center so and also uh, so once you enter the testing room you will be given with a dry erase board and dry erase marker to take a note so, so if you want any if you need any rough work so they will be giving a uh, board and eraser so next is ccs exam retake process so if you did not pass the exam and would like to retake it you must wait for minimum 90 days so in the first attempt you, you did not pass okay and main thing is here in ccs exam you will get single attempt for uh, if you are a member 299 dollar single attempt and if you are a non member 399 dollar single attempt okay in the first attempt if you did not pass again you have to pay the same money the same procedure and then you, you can retake the exam to retake uh, the exam you should wait for 90 days after your first attempt okay this is a minimum waiting period 90 days you have to uh, you know after 90 days only you can retake your ccs exam by paying the same fees okay so better if you are planning for a ccs exam you should be well prepared and once you are ready then only you can plan for your ccs exam so make sure that you are getting pass in a first attempt itself so that's all i hope you people now understood you know how to prepare for ccs and what to learn and who can write ccs exam okay thank you thank you for watching and please subscribe and support and share with your friends thank you all